Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nida AJ. Hi, hi, children. Hi. 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 Jesus. Friend, Friend of, of little children. Good day, everyone. It is so good to see you today. I just love meeting with you all. In fact, I just love you all, period. I love all of you. So today we are here. Um, we are in the month of October. We are in four. We are heading to Thanksgiving and then the fun part two, Christmas. But we are here with news. Uh, recording series of Kiss Time with Jesus. I've missed all of you. Grandmom, granddad, and let's all sit. And then let us have some fun. So today, this afternoon, we are going to learn our memory verse. But before we do that, I have precious ones that have also zoomed in and are here with me. And they want to introduce themselves. And then after that, we'll learn our memory verse and then go on with the main topic for today and we open up for discussion. So we'll start with the first person to introduce himself. Hi, my name is James Osei Ampo from Plano BC, New York District. Hello, my name is Benedict Dubois from the Cincinnati District. Hello, my name is Giovanna, my name is Giovanna Clark and I'm from York District. I mean, Hansburg District. Hi, my name is Dr. Lenafori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Dr. Lenafori from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Janelle Piamenka, and I'm from the Dallas District. Hello, my name is Sean Osetitu Piamenka, and I'm also from the Dallas District. Precious ones, you are all welcome. You are all welcome to today's program, Kids Start with Jesus, brought to you by COP USA. We love all of you. We want you to stay put, uh, sit in the couch, feel free, invite a friend, and then let us know. Give us your feedback what you want us to improve on, but it's time for us to learn our memory verse. So um, I'm going to share my screen here, and then we are going to go over our memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today will be taken from, let me go here, 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. 1 John chapter 4. Verse nine. Okay. Now I read. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into this world that we might live through it or through him. Amen. 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 Our memory verse for this week, precious ones at home, that you need to practice and share with a friend or mom or dad or your Sunday school teacher is 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Amen. So precious ones at home, we want you to practice it and then share it with a friend. Now, the theme for our topic today, I say the theme, excuse me. The topic or the theme for our lesson today is the loving God, the loving God, the loving God. And our scripture reading will be taken from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 19. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to, 7 to 19. I'm getting so excited now. I'm going to calm down. That was just by the way. So we'll let Benedict read for us. First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 19. Mr. Benedict, can you read for us, please? Thank you, Tiana. I'm reading First John chapter 4, verse 7 to 19. And I'm reading from the NIV. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. 
This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but he has loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 11. Dear friends, since God has loved us, we have ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he lives in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anybody acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they live in God. So, and so, we know and rely on the love God has, God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. 17. This is how we, this is how love is made complete among us so that we will, we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect drives out fear because fear has nothing to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. 19. We need love because he loved us first. That is 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 19 from the NIV. Amen. 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 Powerful reading. Fantastic reading. Mr. Benedict, God richly bless you. Precious one, speaking of love, this week I've just been thinking a lot about God's love. He loves us all so much. Some people sadly think that maybe God doesn't love them. They think that they are too bad or sometimes even think that something or that God does not want anything to do with them. Some kids feel that way, yeah. I hope you do not think like that because God does indeed loves all of us and he wants us to know that. This Bible says that, and, and I'm repeating, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love, you may have what? You may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Beloved, God also wants us to know that his love that surpasses all knowledge, it surpasses all understanding, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Beloved, this scripture that I just read can be found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17b to the 19. Precious ones, before we go on with our lesson, yeah, this is Antonina again. I have a little illustration here. Now, look at this glass of water. I have a glass of water right here, right? And just, let's, let's just say that what? The marbles, and I have about four or five marbles here, right? So this is like a half glass of water, and then this is marbles, right? Right now. So this marble in my hands represent you. These little marbles, I don't know whether you see it, but let me pick one and just show. It represents you, us, right? And then the water in the glass here represents love. It's just an illustration, right? It's just to help us understand God's love. Now, if I place one marble, two marbles, three marbles, and three marbles, four marbles, if I put them in this glass, right? Remember we said the water represents what God's love. The marbles is us. Now see it. You see that the marbles are in the water, but there is still room, a lot of water surrounding all these marbles, right? This shows that God's love surrounds us and is more than enough. Even with all the marbles under this glass, the water, there's still a lot of water that are showing on top of this glass, that water. See, 
and you can practice you can practice this at home right the water represents god's love and then the marble is you or us and then when you put them in the glass just see how much water that is still be left the water represent god's love but look we still know that there is more love there's more love left right so let's say that I take more marbles, right? Apart from this four, I take more marbles and put them in here. This one may represent what? If you add more, the more you add, it can represent your family. It can also represent your friends. Another marbles can represent your classmates. It can represent somebody at your daycare or summer camp area. This one may represent the church family as a whole. We could go on and on and on. And you see, all of them are surrounded. All of them are surrounded by what? By God's love for us. And remember, God's love, God is so much, much, much bigger than this small glass, right? With water. God's love is big enough for everyone. Remember that God's love is big enough for everyone to enjoy. You can tell the marbles in the glass right here that they are enjoying what? The love of God that surrounds them. So you can go if you have a lot of marbles or gummies. You can also use gummies, fruit snacks, and just pour them. And then you can see how much water that was still what? Float on top of it. That is God's love for us. Now, precious ones. I want to open the floor for discussion, but as we do that, I want to ask a question to kind of open it. How are some ways that we can show God's love to others, to family, but I want you to start thinking, keep in mind, God is love or God loves you. I also want you to think about what uh, Benedict read about 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, 19. Think about loving one another. Think about love is of God. I also want you to look at God is love. So the floor is open right now. How, how, you eat precious ones, we here. How do we show love to one another? God, what came to die for us, right? His son, he sent his only son to this world to come die for us. And I want you to use practical example because we have all showed love one way or the other to someone, right? Or a friend or a brother or a sister, somebody in church daycare, wherever we find ourselves, I'm sure you have exhibited love to someone. So the, door, the floor is open. Think, I want you to think deeper and cite examples, practical example. The loving God, the floor is open. Yes, Benedict. And then we go to Darren. Okay, so in that example, there's a lot of water still in the, the glass, right? Mm -hmm. So that means as Christians, we should learn to take full advantage of all God's opportunities and think, hmm, God's already given me so much love. But how can I see God and use that love that God has given me to open more and more doors? And what did that I wrote? One thing that I wrote down is but put God first. Put God first. Sometimes in life, we all experience those downhills and stuff that we're going down. You play them like I keep losing. I suck at this. Or when you go take a test and you keep failing over and over again, even though you study really hard. Those downtime. And sometimes, and most of the time, all the time actually, it's not even God. It's either God's will or punishments. It's either God's will or just you. God's will because sometimes the punishments and the hard things that really God's love, God pouring more thing that I put down is to love him first. The number one commandment is to love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, all your strength. Mark 20, 12, verse 30. It's an undivided love. God is our priority. If we love God with all our hearts, all our souls, and all our minds, there will be nothing else to crowd in. For our love of God is manifesting by loving people. Mark 12, verse 31. But if you, but we do not love the things of the world. Earth has nothing. 
I just God got the God, God bless you, Bennett. A great contribution. Yes, we go to Darren and then. Yes. Giovanna, was your hand up before I go to James? No? Okay. So after there, we go to um, James. Okay, I wanted to say that when Benedict was speaking about God's love and how we should put him first, well, when you read the scripture, the, like where Exodus 20, verse 3, it says, you should have another God before me. And the way uh, people think about it is usually like, yeah, I'm so happy I haven't been worshipping any idols lately. But um, what actually what God meant by idols wasn't literally stone, stone statues. What I think what he meant was that anything, anything, you see this one like, yes, I'd, I'd give anything at all for it. And he literally meant it. I'd lose my faith for this thing. Then God, then God would be like, yeah, no, 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 no. Wrong saying there. Chill down, but you, know, you have to come back. So because you forgot about the past that anything except God, because God, when you read the Bible, it says that you should be careful about what you say. So mm. whenever we are thinking about everything at all, we should always put God first. We should always be praying. That's why God says we should pray every time. Because if you pray every time, you'll be too busy praying to actually think about, hey, so, oh, wow, cool statue. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, James. Hi, it's Mina. Can you hear me? I was having yes. a little technical difficulties. I can hear, hear you. me better now. Okay, yes, one can. thing one thing you forgot to add is th that um the more marbles you put in the water, the mm -hmm. more it causes the water to rise to the surface, meaning that you can't think that because you have too much going on in your life right now that God doesn't still love you. Because instead, what he's going to do is going to add so much water that it pours over the cup in your life. Mm -hmm. So God's love will still be surrounding us in, no, no matter whatever we do. I also want to say that as Christians, sometimes we can take God's love for granted. If you look at the Israelites, you've seen how many times they disobeyed God and how many mm -hmm. times they've done stuff, even though God continued to show them mercy. Look, there's this funny story about this guy. There was a flood coming and he was trapped in the flood and this man brought a boat to save him and he said he wasn't going to go in the boat because god was going to save him then this man came with the motorboat and said that he wanted to help this guy out and he said no i'm still going to stand here because god is going to save me this man even came with a helicopter to come and save the man from the water he still said that he was going to wait for god to save him so he being a religious person, he sadly died in the flood. And he goes to heaven and asks God, God, why didn't you save me? And he t and God tells him that I sent someone with a boat to come and save you. You said you, you didn't want him. I sent someone with a motorboat to come and save you. You said you didn't want him. And I even sent a helicopter to come and pull you out of the water. And you still said you didn't want him. So now what do you want me to do? So even when God goes out of his way to show us excessive amounts of love, mm. we can still take it for granted. You see, even in the real world, people do not take love lightly. For example, the Greeks had seven or eight different ways of saying the word love. Eight different ways to say the word love. Even if you look at our universe, right? NASA, when they named a planet Venus, they were naming it after the Roman goddess of love, who was Venus at the time. Even in other religions, every single religion has either a god or goddess of love. And even in Spanish, when I'm talking about Valentine's Day, it can be translated as the day of those who've fallen in love or the day of love and friendship. So even in the real world, people really ex um, accept the power of love. There was this book about... Um, I think it was during the, one of those like recycle days, they were talking about the earth and this lady decided to get creative and she tell people to take care of the earth. So what she did was she wrote a letter to in the form of a book and she pretended that it was from earth. And what she said was the only thing she told people to do was to love the earth. So what's interesting is that when she was writing the letter, she said that she didn't tell them to clean the earth. She didn't tell them to be careful what they're doing, not to make a mess, because she said that once you love the earth, you do all of that. So meaning that once you love someone, you automatically, you know what they like, what they don't like, you'll do everything, you go 
above and beyond just to help that person. So which is why we also have to show love to other people. Because when we show love to other people, we don't have to say, oh, I said God loves you, so I'm not going to take care of this person. Or I see you cry. I already said God loves you last year, so I don't have to come and share a word of prayer with you. But no, once you've told someone God loves the person, it's also your responsibility to show love to that person. Amen. God bless you. Before I come to you, Benedict, our lesson today, you can also find it in our book here, um, The Apologetics for Children, Is He My Father's God or My Own God? The volume one. And it talks about the love in God, the love in God. So we want, if you have your books at home, you can also open, and it was written by our apostle, Michael Ajimana Mwakon. And I know we send this book all nationwide, but if you still need volumes of this, just let me know. If you're on Facebook, you can um, do the messenger and um, we'll get it and then we'll send you one. But you can find the story, you can read more, more practical example, more related stories from the book. So we're still talking about the loving God. Great contribution from James Benedict, Daron. Yeah, Benedict, your hand is up. I just want to relate to James' book, The Man Dying Story. And that brings me to my next point, which is actually, to love God, you got to obey him. When God sends you things your way, good things your way, and you just neglect it, that's just not right. Because God, God is trying to open doors for you. Jesus tells us, if you love me, obey, obey my command. My John 14, 15. Whoever, whoever this is not a merely... Following rules, just registering good deeds and like all that good stuff. It's about having God really written and deedably in our hearts. We naturally wish to please those we love. Like James said, going out of the way, going out of our way to make him happy. Like he said in his earth door that he didn't say just work and clean the earth, but to the love earth. Because we know hmm, the earth, we don't, we don't want to keep it dirty one or later. We don't want to do all that stuff. Same to God. We don't want to get him angry by sinning or not being helpful, or not showing any type of love or compassion. We want to do everything that God wants us to do to be a good Christian, so when we die, we know where we're going. When the movie ends, we know exactly where we're driving to. So, that's mainly it. God bless you. Yes, Amen. Giovanna. Well, I well, Jesus is, well, people think that well, God, well, people think that even if they don't, like, even if they don't, like, if they do something wrong, and even if they don't, um, for, uh, if, even if they don't, like, ask for forgiveness, like, they're, they're, like, perfect, but the thing is, you have to ask God for forgiveness, not that he won't love you, he will love you either way, but you have to ask the Lord for forgiveness for him to sh know that you really want to devote your time. Well, pretty for... much in a way to say that, God, I'm sorry for what I've done, right? Yeah. But yeah. if you don't, it's you're kind of not devoting time to Jesus to show him that you love him and that you want to spend more time. Because if you take Lord for, like the Lord for granted, like James and Benedict said, it's like you don't know where you're going. But if you have that certainty of where you're going, then that means that you know that you have put time and patience in loving Jesus and loving everybody around you. Great point. Great point. So what Giovanna is saying is that, you know what? We know God is loving, right? He's a loving God. But even if you sin, when you sin, still go to God and ask for forgiveness of sins, right? Don't say, that, oh, he's a loving God. So you know what? I'm not even going to ask for forgiveness of God got it. God will forgive me, right? Giovanna is saying that she thinks that you should still go to God. 
ask for forgiveness of sins and he will forgive you. Don't sit there and just assume that since he's a loving God, he's going to forgive you. But still go and show some remorse and God will what? We'll still forgive you anyway. God richly bless you. Great point. Yes, Janelle, I saw your hand. Your hand is up. And we come to um, that point. Um. Like um like James and Benedict said um like to um to f love God you have to like obey Him for like in this in a story in the Bible is about Daniel and Daniel, the lion's den. Daniel and the lion's den and how Daniel obeyed the Lord and the people tried to harm him mm -hmm. but because Daniel obeyed the Lord then um he ended up um getting becoming saved by the Lord and the people that tried to harm him were the ones that um, got killed. Fantastic, great contribution, Janelle. So he is the loving God, right? But as even though he's the loving God, we still have to show obedience, right? So when we, when Janelle is saying that when you obey God and he used, she used that Daniel, when he was in that, when he was thrown into the lion's den, because he loved so, God so much, and God also loved him. Even when he was thrown into the lion's den, God was there with him. He calmed, he shut the mouth of the lions. And guess what? They didn't eat him up. Try that today. Oh, we don't want to go there. But when God loves you, he will protect you. He will guide you. He will make sure that nothing bad comes near you. He will shield you with, with all the love that he can when you are in trouble, when you are down, when you are sick, when you are sad. God will love and mercies will cover us all. God bless you. Uh, Declan, my young prophet. Um, this he stole my title, auntie. He stole my oh, title. You are the first young prophet, and he's the second Declan, young prophet. You got some competition. No, 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 no. You got <laughs> some competition, buddy. <laughs> no, no, exactly no, no. go on. But in when you look at the story in Genesis about one, let's say yes, no, when the Satan or Lucifer and God, when Jesus when God made Jesus like, when God made Lucifer like himself, like an image, a perfect image of himself. No, don't worry. <laughs> but when God made a perfect image of himself in like yes. an angel form in Lucifer, which became a devil. But you see, because of the love of God, you had time to make that, that thing. But then when you take, to, when you take like God's love for granted, well, <laughs> you might go way too overboard. Because yeah. when you like, like people, many people test God's love like this. I'm going to jump in the roof. I'm going to jump off a roof of a house. In fact, a mansion, a tower. Ooh. And then they expect to, <laughs> and then they expect to just live peacefully, fly. Yeah. On the bright side, you know they want to fill your body so to be peaceful. <laughs> yeah, taking feet, and then that is how like taking feet. That is the way when you are going way to overboard of God's love. When you are taking it's God's love for granted. God bless you. Yes, that Darren, and then we come to Joanna and then Benedict. Um, what I wanted to say is that when we look at Lucifer. I real, what I've realized is that when you get a lot of God's love, the more of it you want, the more of something you get, the more of something, you, the more you want it. You are never going to be satisfied with just having a little. Because Lucifer, he, the moment he realized that, yes, oh, wow, God has given him me some of his powers. In fact, I'm basically, according to the prophet Isaiah, I'm the perfect image of him. Whoa, then I can do greater. Then I might as well return God himself. That is what Lucifer thought. So when God is giving us his love, we should be, instead of, instead of thinking, oh, yes, 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 God, please, now give me this, give me this, give me this, and give me this. Instead of that, we should be very, very grateful because you begin to test his patience. And testing God's patience, well, to get that far, you'd have had to do a lot of testing first. Please. Great point. So here, what I just, 
got from what you said is that we need to appreciate the, 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 the love of God, right? God's love for us, we need to appreciate it as in believers, right? Because just imagine if God takes his love away from you, right? I'm sure you'll be in the hands of the evil one, right? So that is well, that is why the, that is why we need to stay under the feet of the Lord or God Almighty, right? So that when we are enjoying and swimming in the pool of love, we shouldn't think that we are what? Oh, God, no matter what, God, 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 God loves me. Oh, God loves me. And you'll be doing other stuff that are not what? That are not godly. If you keep doing that, God's love will be swifter will be shifted away from you. We should always try as precious ones to love one another. You can only love when you have love, right? You can offer love to a friend or a sister or someone if you yourself have love. If you don't have love, can you offer love to someone? No, you can't. Yes, Giovanna. Um, when Declan said that you shouldn't test God's, like, you shouldn't test God's love. It got me wondering because it made me remember there is a story. Somebody, somebody said, okay, God loves me so much. Even if I say something like this, he won't do it. So the person said, the person was a very rich person. And they said, God, even God himself cannot make me poor. Mm. A week later, he got a call from the, the bank. All his money had been stolen. Mm. <laughs> and I'm loving your story, Giovanna. All his money had been stolen. And the man said, hey, how? He prayed to God <laughs> and he heard the God, voice of God. He said, when you test me, I am, I am God. I can do anything. Even though I will love you, if you test me, I will make your testing. I will test. I will make sure you know that I can do anything. I can do anything, even when you yourself think I can't. I brought you into this world. I and I gave you everything that you can have. I can also take it away from you. Hallelujah! That's a good example. It also reminds me about the story of Job. But Job. It is Jesus that allowed, it is God that allowed the enemy to test Job, right? Mm -hmm. For that one. But this one was a rich man bragging that word. Oh, everything I have is by my own strength. God cannot take anything from me, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? God said, oh, you just said that? I gave you this riches and I will take it from you. So God took everything, every money, everything he had, he took it out of the bank. And guess what? He came to ground zero. Ooh, that would be... Uh, I don't know. I, I would love to see that rich man's face. So God can make you rich and God can make you poor. So every day as Christians, well, we need to have what? A heart of what? A grat uh, uh, We need to have, we need to be grateful. The attitude right? of gratitude. I, having an attitude of gratitude. Attitude of gratitude. We need to appreciate the love of God in our life, in our family. What surrounds us, we need to appreciate it. Yes, Benedict. Well, I have one thing to say that a little draw to my mind. One for Giovanna. What I say is don't brag because God brought you in this world so he can take you out. To Darren, um, if God moves his hand and his love from you, it's about to be the seven years of relation to point of. And lastly, what I want to say is to you to love God, if you want more of that, how I said that water, if you want more of that water, God pour water on you, you have to desire him and yearn for his righteousness. His word is grace. As a deer pants for the stream of water, so my soul pants for you, O Lord. Psalm 42, 1. Amen. God bless you. Yes, we God go to great contribution, Benedict. We'll go to Janelle. Janelle or Shane. Sean. So um I wanted to share share a, share a story about um Solomon about King Saul. Okay. And um about how how God um helped him become a king because he was good in God's eyes. 
but then he started like um he started disobeying God little by little. So then God like kind of departed away from him and like went to David. Fantastic, great contribution too. Great, you were able to relate that. Saul thought everything he was doing was by his strength. He thought he was a king. Therefore, he was a king bigger than God. God, God made him aware that what I give you all this and I can take it all from you. As precious ones, we need to appreciate the love of God for our lives. God is love. He loves us irrespective of who we are. Your color, your race, your, your whatever you may reach, poor, medium, God loves us, the loving God. He loves us just as who we are. Yes, um, Bennett, um, Declan, Darren, sorry. And then we go to James. Okay. What I wanted to say is that King Saul, um, Solomon, all of these people, they had so much of God's love. I mean, it takes a lot to become the first king of the entire country of Israel. The first thing, king, it takes a lot. But then in the end, he ended up departing. And mm. I know that even Jesus, the great son of God, the one who is here to all of God's power, which is infinite, so it's going to be hard for Jesus to get out of them. <laughs> you see, even Jesus, he knew not to trespass God's boundaries. Because when the Satan, the guy, the accuser, he's come here, he's going to give you all of this. All you have to do is say, all you have to do is fall off a hill. I'm sure mm. the, um, the Satan was hoping that he'd mistake later in the case. But still, even the even Satan, he, when he asked when he asked Jesus to jump off a hill and test God, Jesus was like, thou shalt not test thy God. I was like, mm. oh, okay. so if even the son of God says you shouldn't test God, then um, <laughs> you better not. Uh, yeah, even <laughs> if the son of God said we shouldn't test God, who are we? Sometimes we believers, we forget ourselves. We say things as if we own ourselves. We say things as if everything, even our existence, we live in. We live in is by grace. We are alive is by grace, right? Therefore, we need to appreciate God's love in our lives. Yes, we we'll go to James and then go to um, Giovanni. And then so ben when Darren was saying that um, Satan probably hoped for Jesus to die in the process, um, all Jesus had to do was blow in some heavenly tongues, and then he wouldn't <laughs> hurt himself when he jumped off a cliff. I mean, he is really? the son of God. Yeah. He, he, he has to speak in another language, and then uh -huh, mm. you see Jesus flying. So that's my personal belief. Mm. Also, um, when Giovanna was telling the story about the rich man, it reminded me about the story of the Titanic. Yeah, um, the Titanic, when it was built, everyone knows the history of the Titanic, that it was meant to be the unsinkable ship. And in the movie, one of the guys said that even God cannot sink the ship. Uh -huh. so, when, so when my dad watched the movie, he, now he always thinks that maybe that's also why the Titanic sunk. Because how would you believe a ship sunk because of an iceberg? Like... Ice is what you use to cool your drink. How can uh -huh. ice c easily cut through steel and sink a, like an enormous cruise ship? So like um, like Darren said, once you begin to test God, because even his own son is not testing him, why would you a, per a person a nobody from the sidelines come and say that if I if I jump off a a a, a, a tower, God God will save me? You you can't test God like that. Because when we test God, it's not like we're testing him and it's what we're saying is too powerful so he can't do it, so he's mad at us. No, when we test God, that means that we don't believe God can do what we're saying he can do. Hmm. So when you say that, oh, I'm a rich person, not even God can make me poor, that shows that you doubt God's power. So whenever that, so that's why um, whenever we test God, God doesn't like it because we're doubting him. I also wanted to say that um, God shows us enormous love because he is the best father we can ever have. That, mm. That's my second point. Because if you read John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He, my, my mom says something funny that before I used to be the only child. But now that I have a sister, she says that if you do misbehave, yeah, I can go to this other one and uh -huh. I can teach her instead of you. So like now <laughs> she has a choice. It's not like she's stuck with me. But Jesus was God's only son. 
And every movie, every book, even in real life, parents, you see parents would do anything for their children. Like, parents, you, you, you see stories of parents sacrificing themselves or selling themselves into slavery just to keep their own children alive. Yet, Jesus, or sorry, yet God, he throws away millions, no, actually, this is actually trillions, because the world... History is only recorded as like when people started writing down history. So that means that the world is much older than what scientists believe the world is. So meaning that, and that's not even coming into the fact that God was there before the world, like he created the world. So actually, this is actually trillions of tradition of being a parent and God just throws it all away to save a group of people, the Israelites, who weren't even respecting him. Because if you read in the Bible, I, if, if I if I was God, right? I, I keep saying that if I was God, I wouldn't give apost I wouldn't give John the 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 freedom to write revelations because the world mm. would have already ended. If, if if I was to look at everything the Israelites done and I was to punish them, there wouldn't be need to have a revelation. The world would have ended right then and there. So yeah. really, what God has done for us in our lives, right? We can't, we can't, um, we can't really even, the, we can't, we don't have a proper way to even say thank you because no, the I'm fact that you're there. alive, someone, there are 7 billion people in the world, mm -hmm. right? The fact that you were able to wake up and not even thank God, someone died in their sleep. The fact that you were able to wake up, someone out there was swimming in a pool or someone got hurt or someone lost their family member, but you're able to wake up and have air in your lungs. You're able to wake up and uh, talk and be rude and disrespectful to your friends and you still have the life to do all that. You are someone doesn't have what you have. That expression that says that one man's garbage is another man's gold is true because someone is envying the kind of life you have. Someone has some health difficulties and they're constantly in the hospital and they have to use a machine to give them air to breathe. But you as a Christian, all God says is obey him. And sometimes we can't even do it. So at this point, what really should God do to us as Christians? So like Benedict said, we always have to be obeying God and we shouldn't have to take God's mercy and his love and his blessings and his patience, grace, and kindness for granted. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Great contribution. I love your contribution. Yes, Giovanna. <laughs> I, like when p other people say something, it reminds me of so many stories. Share them, and honey. Share them with us. And when um, James spoke about how parents will go out of their way to save children, it reminded me of this Christian family. The boy asked the dad, at the age of four, the boy asked the dad, Daddy, what will you give me for my 18th birthday? His dad thought, oh, no, that's too far away. And he so he said to his son, don't worry about that. It's too far away. I'll tell you later. The boy said, okay. Two years later, the boy was found. The boy was found with um, a heart, um, a, a a brain tumor. That that the battle for the brain tumor lasted until he was eighteen. Wait, no, he had he had um, a lost kidney. Yeah, for people to look for that was eighteen years. When he. When he was finally home on his 18th birthday, he got home and saw a letter on his bed. When he opened the letter, it said to his, it said from his dad, it said, when you were four, you asked me what I would get you for your 18th birthday. And it said, and he said, and he said, well, I, well, what, what I gave you was my, was my, what I gave you was your life your dad i will always love you your dad oh and so people parents will sacrifice their life for their child to live and like and like and imagine if like like imagine somebody is like 
it's like people even take that life for granted. Mm. That life that the parent will literally sacrifice. It's like saying that child just crumpled up the letter and threw it away. Mm. So you know, grateful. Exactly. So we we have to appreciate the fact, even the fact for you to be able to disrespect God is a blessing. Because if you even have like if you even have the mind and like the breath to say, oh, it's fine. Do you know how much of a blessing that is? Mm. Like, I mean, we shouldn't disrespect God, but even for you to disrespect God is like a blessing in itself. (laughs) Because for you to be able to do that, it's like... (laughs) Words cannot express it, right? I know. Every morning when I get up, I literally just look at myself and I'm like, okay, I'm here. I see the dew. I can see my I can see my blanket. I can see everything. Mm. It's God, like, thank you for the gift of life, right? I know. It's like thank you. Oh, you're welcome. God bless you. God bless you for sharing with us. Yes, Janelle. This this is kind of like is it story. Janelle or Shane? Whose hand was that? Mine. Because I can see you both at the same time, so I don't know whose hand is that. It is was it me. was it Sean or you? It me. was it was me. Okay. Okay. So um, so we we thought like um pertaining to what um she said, like it's kind of like, it's like about how you have to be um how God will try and test you and how you have to like be ready for it it's like the story of job so like um how job was a rich man and he had like so many kids and stuff and uh, um how god's uh how satan tried to challenge god to see if job Job. would obey him so that um he took um all like job's wealth and job's children everything that job cherished and then job still uh worshiped god and um god gave him back double of what he had the first mm. time mm. god bless you um sean and janelle for for contributing god richly bless you thank you for relating the loving god to job's story precious ones as we talk as we share as we contribute the time is flying now we are in the last phase of it now precious ones tell me what tell the whole world what do you have learned What have you learned? We've been talking about the loving God, the loving God. We took our scripture from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 19. We read about the loving God and we, we, we said that God is love. God is love. He's a loving God. We have contributed how we have shared love to one another, to, to your enemies. Now, what have you learned as we bring our discussion to an end? Uh, I want every one of you here present to share with everyone here, those that are watching us, what have you learned this afternoon? We will start with Benedict and then we come to Sean. So Sean, get ready. So one thing that I've learned is not to take God's love for granted. Like you wake up every day and some people just hop out of the bed. And sometimes I even have to remind myself, uh, I forgot to pray to God before even go brush your teeth. Like the first thing you gotta do is just start of obedience. Is start giving God praise and adoration because some people even today was the end of their movie and they don't even know where they're going. We gotta just because we gotta share the love and also spread the word to others for those who are also Christians. God, that was God's mission that He left with the apostles. And once He left, He told them specifically. He left them with the Holy Spirit and told them to go out and scatter around and go tell people about the love, God's love. So we shouldn't just stay at home and be like bored every day and just play games. We should go out there during church, go to school, see how your son was a representative, praying over his food, and that oh, he touched some some other kid to do the same. Like be that leader, don't be the follower. God takes care of His sheep, so never be afraid to do what is right in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Benedict. We'll go to Shane. Sean. 
What I have learned today about love is that um, that we should always love God. We should always obey him, read his word, and pray. Because uh, most people say, just like you said, that most people say that God doesn't love them. But God is um, always taking um, care of us and always loving us in many different ways. And just how um, the marbles in the water is that God's love is always still going to be there in that every time you put a marble in it, it will always rise. There's mm. always space for his love. So, God bless um, you. God bless you. Leave some for Janelle. Janelle, what have you learned? I've learned to like, I've learned to like love God. You have to obey him. Like, you have to show him gratitude and you have to um, not only ask him for things, but thank him for what he has given you. Because um, when you thank God for what he has done for you, that like permits God to do more for you in your life god bless yeah. you god bless you yes giovanna and then we come to um james would you go last okay yeah <laughs> so we'll go to giovanna and then we go to bennett and declan darren don't cry and we'll go to james last yes giovanna what i've learned today is that never ever test god if the son of god has like like says don't test him and he's like the son of god don't test him because we are humans we have mm. no power on this earth god like, bless you even if like even if lucifer god made lucifer like all perfect if he even had like if he when he went to God and he like fell off, off, he fell. If he can fall, imagine what can happen to us. Mm. So just don't never ever test God in your entire life. Don't mm. test God. Don't test God. Just as the son of God, the devil told what? The son of man to do that. And he did not. He said, no, I'm not doing it. If he did not, who are you? Who are you? Let's have an attitude of gratitude and appreciate God's love for our lives and what he's doing for us and our family and in the church body. And what? Appreciate and thank him and not think that what? Don't take God's love for granted. Don't do it. Let's appreciate him at all times. We'll go to Declan and Daryl. Okay, so I learned that to do not take God's love for granted because mm. there might be many consequences. For it. There are many consequences for it. God bless. Yes, Darren. I learned that just like the band in the boot, you should really, like, I mean, you should really be careful of help that God sends to you because um, there are certain helps you just don't want to miss. Because, like, the man in the boot, if you miss one help, I mean, who? Who turns down a helicopter flight? <laughs> okay, A, B. When God sends you help, you should also at least ask that God, please, when you are sending me help, let me also be able to know. Because if God sends you help, like, oh, hey, nice boat there. You saw the boat fly, go by. But then the boat literally just went by. That's unconditioned and everything. I'm not sure if boats have a condition. Maybe it hasn't been invented yet. But the boat has air condition and everything. It just went by. We're like, oh, hey, boat, say hi. Then the person will say hi. And then the boat will pass by in the middle of the flood. Then you then just die. That's it. End of life. The better do you go to heaven a lot earlier than planned. God bless you. Now, James, sum it all up. I think you did a good decision making me go last. I have a lot I to know. say. I know. I know what I'm doing, <laughs> honey. <laughs> I know. That's why I say you were gonna go last. Sum it up. Okay. So one thing I've learned, I've learned a lot about love today, like mm -hmm. through the marble story, through the not testing God, not taking his love for granted. I also wanted to say the quick something that as Christians, most Christians, um, uh, their relationship with God is like what they can get. 
That's what I've noticed. Like, we all take God's love for granted. I, I always remember me praying to God, like, for the most expensive car when I grow up and all that time. Me, I don't even need a car right now. Like, I'm nowhere close to driving. Like, it's almost all, it's almost as if we're just trying to use God for what we can get. We really have to appreciate the fact that he is God. This famous preacher once says that, he doesn't pray to inform God about like what he wants and stuff, but rather he prays to invoke God in his life. That that was a very very powerful thing that that's that stuck with me since then. And one way you can invoke God or rather invoke His love is by reading the Bible, because the Bible is also a part of God. So everything about God, is, because you see, I think I forgot which Bible verse, but it said that God is love, right? So it's not like God is showing us love, or it's not like when we're trying to, we have the choice to show people love, but as Christians, which literally means like Christ, we have to show love, and while we're showing love, we're literally showing God to someone. So that's um, another thing, because God is love. So when we invoke God by reading the Bible every day, we're also getting a little piece of God's love in our lives. There was this very interesting story. Well, this lady died, right? And she left her nephew $20,000, her Bible, and all it contains. So the nephew throws the Bible away somewhere, and he, he immediately squanders the $20,000, and he lives the next 20 years of his life in poverty. Now, one day when he accidentally knocks over the Bible, he sees a $100 bill fall out of the Bible. That he opens the Bible, and between every single page is a hundred dollar bill. Mm. Now, in a Bible, there's at least on average one thousand two hundred pages in a Bible, meaning this guy had one hundred two one. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do the math here. One hundred and twenty thousand dollars that he could have spent the twenty years living in richness but rather because he thought he knew what the bible contained he just threw it away for like he'd even he'd even acknowledge it mm. so that mm. is in a way when giovanna was sharing the story about like what if you crumpled up the note that is how drastic some people take god for granted she was right the fact that you're able to come up and disrespect god is a blessing because someone is dead so we really, like, I, we can't stress enough how important it is not to take God for granted. I just, mm -hmm. We just, we forever since we started this conversation, everyone said, don't take God for granted. But you really have to see how important it is not to take God for granted. Because that guy would have lived his life straight. Because $100, you know, that, yeah. that's all, all he had yeah. to do was just open the Bible. She never said read it. She just said my Bible and all it contains. But you know, you saw what happened. Yeah. So, yeah. God bless you. Benedict, did I skip you? Oh no. Did you tell us what you learned today? Did you do that? Yeah. Okay. God bless all of you. Great contribution. Oh, I love the topic, the loving God. The loving God. It is a topic I love so much. Precious ones, God is love. God doesn't just love. God doesn't just have love. God isn't just in love with us. Loving is not just part of him. God is love. It is what his entirety is. That's whatever, whoever claims to be in an intimate relationship with God and knows God should be readily and willingly demonstrate the same character he is. God's love relationship, God's love relationship will give us, will give us to experience not just what we think is right, but also what? To experience what he has, what has done upon our lives. God has been the chaser of mankind since his creation. Yep, love begins and ends with God. As the book ends, that holds everything. The book ends, that holds everything. So here, just if you have a Bible close by you, just pick up your Bible. 
Love holds the bookend here, right here, right? There's a name for that too, right? What's the name? If you go to school, there's a name for that. Is it a spine? They call it a spine. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the spine. Yeah. It's the spine, right? My preschooler, my daughter came and was like, oh, do you know when you're about to read the Bible, you're about to read your book, you have to look at the, the front page, the back page, and then the spine. That's what, how I learn about the spine. So here is called the spine. You have to, it is what? Love that holds us together. If we say we are Christians and precious ones that loves God, and that then we need to demonstrate love just as Christ loves us. May the Lord bless all of you. May the Lord bless his word. May the Lord reach out to every child around the world that, will, that, do, that needs love. If they don't have home for them to provide love to those children, may God give them a better home so that they will, the love will be offered unto them. God do not pick and choose who he will love, but God loves us all. Let us try and do the experiment. A half glass of water, marbles. Remember, Auntie Nina didn't have marbles. So guess what I use? I use fruit snack. You can also use gummies, right? You drop them in it. And remember, as you put them in and the water keep rising, what? The love of God, what? Overflows, right? So let's keep that in mind and let's share with our friends and loved ones. God richly bless all of you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for our work today. We pray that even us, oh God, you have made us know that you are loving God. A seed has been sown in our hearts. Father, we pray that your showers of blessing, your showers of love will continue to water it, oh God, so that it will grow and bear fruit to your, um, to your glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Precious ones, we will see Amen. all of you next week. Until then, it's bye Amen. for now. Bye. We love you all. Bye. Bye.